you've got livestock, you're always gonna have dead stock. Has anyone else noticed that cows are racist? Oh, I've got a confession to make as well. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. It's been a really busy week here. It's been an Easter weekend and as you can hear, there's some cows making a racket because we've let them out. This field is what we call the carving field and we've turfed all the cows to carve because there's only about 28, 29 left. It's easy to access the buildings from here if we need to so that's why we like to loaf them in here. It's been a nice weekend so they've been out. We've had a calf there this morning. There's another one up there. Three more over there as well. They're also making a racket because the stabilizers that have carved are on this side of the drive. Nice grass as well. So we're keeping the stabilizers separate again this year because I want to AI them. Once they've carved they'll all go in there and then the heifers um, to bull will also go in with them so that I can keep an eye on them and they'll stay pretty close to the yard as well for AI in. It is forecast a bit of a wet week as of this evening so what we're going to do is bring those guys in in the evening and feed them in the gangway with a bit of silage and a little bit of straw and then let them out in the day. I don't really want them in the yards if we can help it we're running low on silage so getting them out to grass will help us but I don't want them out there if they're gonna make a mess as well. As I mentioned, it was Easter weekend, bank holiday. We tried to take it easy. I had a nightmare of an Easter Sunday because we had a cow die at Thornton. I always say that I'm gonna share the good and the bad and there's the bad. Not a clue why it's died. It's been out at grass for quite a long time. It was the third cow this year to carve. So it's been carved a while. It's been healthy the whole way through. It's had its boluses, it's got magnesium blocks. It's been out of grass for about a fortnight before it went to Thornton and then that not a clue dad was telling me once years ago that he had a cow drop dead at the side of the drive there where those other cows just are when he was mowing the lawn one day just keeled over and died and when the knacker man come and picked it up and they butchered it and did whatever they do they found that a little bit of wire had been swallowed and at some point either through the esophagus or through the stomach it had perforated it and gone through its heart so I mean, some things you can't do anything about, can you? Uh, but anyway, you win some, you lose some. That's just part of farming, isn't it? It's not always good. If you've got livestock, you're always gonna have dead stock. As I mentioned, it's gonna rain in a bit, but it's quite nice now, and it's just perfect weather for a little bit of toe and fur because this machine is still here, and I wanna go and make some good use of it. So I filled it up with a bit of urea this morning and some molasses and some humates, and I'm gonna go and chuck a bit on and see how we get on. Oh, you might have noticed. The load has come off as well because cows are out. It's officially spring. No more livestock farmer mode for a while. She's got the weight lock on. Looks an absolute honey. this field and uh, before I move on I just want to show you this because look we've never had this problem up here before but we're on really light soil up here this is a field up the village and it's right near a sand and gravel quarry which is like the other side of that wood over there look at this mess see this this is all badgers just rooting up the soil I think they go looking for worms they just snuffle it all up and it's quite a big patch here and there's another little patch there. Then there's another patch down by that bit of hedge right in the distance. But there's a guy who has a caravan in that wood because that wood's not part of this land. And they have absolutely destroyed where his caravan is. They made a right mess. But I don't know why uh, we've started getting this. We've never really had badgers up here. And this has never been a problem we've had before, but it's something we've got to watch out for. I wanted to bring some heifers up here, but not replacement heifers, which is probably quite important because last year we had the stabilizers up here, but. If there's this many badgers around, considering we had the TB problems last year, I think I might just avoid this with anything that's going to stay in the herd. But yeah, weird, isn't it? How they've made such a mess. It's just starting to rain, so we're going to go and get those cows in out of the field. But I just wanted to show you these guys, because they're all pretty much sat down. Look how these things have grown. They are massive. I think we're going to have a weighing session. This one here, this is the biggest one. He was like 5.30 last time we weighed him, about three or four weeks ago. So 
I think he's going to be getting up towards sort of 570, 580 now. Some of these are getting really close to slaughter, so we'll have to uh, just start and weigh them a bit more regularly now. They're actually eating that arable silage we made last year. If you look at this, oh, it smells really good. It's got the peas in it, as you can see. It's got some barley in there and the oats, and it's just like rocket fuel. They're absolutely loving it. The trough is full of it now, but by the morning, that'll be empty. They absolutely love it. This is my stabilizer ball that we're doing battle of the breeds with. We're gonna keep him. We're actually semen testing next week, so we'll semen test him, make sure he's all right. They look like balls now, if you know what I mean. Just filled out. Right, Dad's going to get his Polaris. He's gonna go round up the calves. I'm gonna head straight across for that ring feeder because I want to put a bale of straw in the yard and I need a ring feeder. And hopefully, these guys will get the gist of what's going on. Come on! Doesn't look like they've got the gist of coming in in an evening. Obviously, they're not dairy cows. They're not used to this. Maybe when they've done it a couple of days, they'll be a bit keener, but they are really not interested. I don't blame them either. I haven't been cooped up in that shed all winter. Come on, girl. Come on. Jesus Christ. It's like herding cats. They're just not interested. Has anyone else noticed that cows are racist? Because the stabilizers are just here and the blue cows are over there. They just never mix. I just don't know what it is. They just don't mix. Whew. It is windy this morning. The cows have gone back out, which is nice to see. It's dry at the minute. It's forecast to rain again later on. So they look like they're coming back in. Got the bucket on because dad is going to load some wheat out of there whilst I, yes, ladies and gentlemen, are taking cows and calves to Thornton, which is awesome because what does that mean? The beef bus is back. Also, while I'm here, silage has got nailed. That's all we've got left. I've had enough for a fortnight, I think, at current rate, which means that we're going to soon have to do some silaging. Grass is looking good out there, so hopefully we won't be too long before we get some decent weather. Forage dry is also looking pretty awesome. I ought to show you that at some point when I'm going past. But look at this beauty. Seems like only yesterday we put it away. And now she's back out. Woo! Cows to Thornton. What a day. grim out here but they seem happy enough to be out well uh get fastened up head back to the yard grab a bit of dinner and then bring another load It's horrible out there. I think it's really grim. It's icy cold with that rain coming down. But this is the last load for today. Taking another seven cows and calves. That'll take us up to 31 cows at Thornton, I believe. And we're trying to get about 40 to 42 cows over there because we don't want too many because of the grazing lanes and trying to give it a bit more of a rest. Grass is growing quite well up there as well at the minute for this time of year. So we're just praying for a bit of warmth and it will really kick off then. So we'll get these taken over and then hopefully get back and I'd maybe weigh some calves if I'm lucky. Should point out as well, I bought an extra mag bucket. These few that we've got in the trailer now haven't actually been out yet, so just wary of that magnesium. And the dog is fuming because she's been displaced. Uh, she's not happy. I'm gonna be in for it tonight, I think. My cat 
carry my mag block through. Something tasty, I'm going to point out. All of these calves, apart from that grey one in the corner, the rest of them are all stabiliser crosses. So all these red ones and the black ones are stabiliser crosses and they're absolute units. I'm well chuffed with these. I like this one. I really like this one. It's like red with black underneath it. It's, it's cool. I wish it was a heifer. But actually they're all bulls because all the cows we're bringing to Thornton have all got bull calves on them this year because I'm thinking about potentially creep feeding them. Now we don't normally creep feed calves. We have got creep feeders over here. And the idea being that if we wanted to, I could put those creep feeders on the grazing lanes that we put in and then I wouldn't have to move them between each paddock because they'd be able to access them every time they went to drink. That way around, these would be pushed on that little bit more that around this time next year, we'd be drawing on some of these calves then. Don't know if anyone else creep feeds, let me know what you think. The other thing I'm going to show you, I've done some toe and furting out here, but I haven't done this bit here yet. This is actually regrowth. This one's been grazed, but look, I'll just show you this where the fence has been. Look at that. Amazing. I can't believe that. We never have grass up here like that. Really hoping that with those grazing lanes and then rotational grazing this in two hectare blocks, moved every two days, 26 day rotation. Really hoping that that gets this producing more grass. Oh, I've got a confession to make as well. When I came last time, when I went and I left, I, uh, I managed to get the trailer stuck. I know, I'm not much of a tractor driver. I'm just, I'm just not, I'm not very good at it. Luckily for me, Mr. Milner came and rescued me. Um, so thank you very much, Ed, if you're watching this. I appreciate it. I'm not a very good tractor driver. I'll hold my hands up. It's not my forte. And I proved that, I really did. Managed to make it back this time without getting in any dishes and looking like an idiot. These are the cows that are grazing at the side of the drive. I just brought them in so that they are in for the night because it is raining. Just not doing anything yet. They tend to wait until, you know, we sat down with our feet up the chimney before they decide they're gonna do something. I think we're gonna go for a quick session, and try and get these other calves that we've got up in the top yard, I'll show you in a minute, all tagged up and weighed. And these are those calves that need tagging and weighing. As you can see, we've got some nice stabilizer ones. I love that little one, that's a little heifer. It's just a proper little perky one. those of you who are interested in those calf weights, let's refer to the magic book. Although we use Herdwatch, we keep this book all the time, all of our bull records in, all of our calving records. And it tells us what, what date it was born, what the calf tag number is, how much it weighed, the dam, the sire, and the sex, whether we had to assist it or not. And it's just all in this book and it is brilliant. Herdwatch is amazing and it's great to have electronic records, but you can't beat a book. So if we look through here, these are the ones we just weighed. Um, stabilizer wise, stabilizer calves, either out of blue heifers or out of stabilizer cows. The smallest was 32 kilos. The biggest was 43 and a half. And the biggest overall was a Charolais out of a 2018 cow. And that was 47 kilos. That was a beast. Yeah, I bet she knew she'd push that out. But generally 38, 37, that kind of range. So pretty happy with that. That's about where we want to be. Right, I'm going to get off because we've got some Polaris issues that need dealing with. Broke down, which yeah. Not great. I hope you have a great weekend. Look after yourselves. See you in a bit. Ta-da.